with uh, Jason Kelsey now working for ESPN uh, and uh, gallivanting in London with his brother and his wife, right? right? And Tom Cruise and Hugh Grant, you know, at Wembley, all hanging out. Uh, (laughs) This guy's just the OG left behind. That's one way to put it. He's Lane Johnson of the Philadelphia Eagles here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Lane? Uh, doing well. Happy belated uh, birthday to you. Thank you, Lane. And, uh, yeah, Thank you. Getting, uh, getting ready for training camp here in about a month. I appreciate it. Uh, are you going to bring Tom Cruise out uh, right now uh, with Hugh Grant? Well, uh, Greta Gerwig? Yeah, I, I, you, uh, I would like for them to do some stunts for me in a training camp, maybe take a few reps, so <laughs> if they're willing. Yeah, bring them all out there, you know, because that's what Jason's doing. Did you see that movie had apparently – by the way, when 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 – when you're a, a Kelsey at a Taylor Swift concert now, basically ev- every move you make is being recorded by somebody's cell phone. Mm-hmm. Did you see the move he made by holding the beer in his yeah. in his mouth, the beer cup in his mouth while all like doing stuff on his phone, like walking with a full like pint of beer literally hanging from his mouth? Mm-hmm. Did you see that, Lane? See that uh, I didn't see that video, but I've seen uh, lots of rehearsals. Uh, <laughs> <up to> that. <laughs> but I missed that one. You see, so you've seen that in its uh, in its it, natural habitat, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, a long progression, long 10, 11 year progression of it. So it's he's got more skilled as the years have gone. Uh, he's just he's like a fine wine or uh, an old beer. Um, so uh, I, I guess what were OTAs like without him there, Lane? What is it like? Uh, you know, it was different. You know, not having him on the field for sure, but you know, he was in the building quite a bit. So I think oh. he was you know, pondering about what he wanted to do this year. I think he had many options. So uh, did get to see him quite a bit, thankfully. But, yeah, definitely going to miss him. Uh, it, it is different not having him in the room, you know, his aura, his presence. Um, you know, and a lot about football. I mean, we're going to miss the games, but a lot of it is, you know, the stuff that happens in the locker room, in the meeting room, and, and that's what we're going to miss most. So what was he doing around just – um just hanging out. Uh, I think I think he was lifting. He was lifting really? a little bit. He was he was taking advice maybe on what he should do, weighing out his options. So I think that's that's really what he was doing. He was he was doing a lot of pondering, uh, we call it. So a lot that's of what he was doing. Pondering. Okay. And so what advice did you give him? Uh I, I think um, you know, he had many options, but I was like do what's not going to drive you totally insane. You know, take it the first year, little baby steps and um yeah i mean i think uh with what he has now he'll obviously be busy monday nights but i think he'll have a little bit of freedom this week and you know hopefully i'd like to see him uh possibly in there helping us with some game plan situations so uh, maybe he can do that for us interesting okay so then what conversations do you have with cam jurgens about taking that spot here if any yeah my, my advice is just uh, be yourself you know you don't have to be jason kelsey or try to be uh become your own player your own style and uh yeah, I mean, I, I think what you can take from Kelsey is his work ethic, you know, how he approached every day, how he was with his teammates, uh, what kind of leader he was. But, you know, my advice is, is to be yourself, and, and that's what he's doing. Okay. So, um, so far, so good in practice, right? I mean, obviously, Rubber's going to meet the road in Brazil in a couple yeah. months. But what's your yeah, sense? Yeah, no, a, a, really, a really tremendous player. You know, he played guard for us last year, and there was a lot of questions about that. But. Uh, supremely talented, uh, very strong uh, on the field, very good movement. And, and as you know, Kels was kind of um, behind uh, selecting him. He, he liked what he saw on film and kind of handpicked him. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you could tell Cam could play, you know, right away uh, as soon as he got to the team. He, he has he has everything you're looking for. And what was it like, Lane Johnson, the first time you were in a huddle of any sort? Uh, and it's Saquon Barkley wearing your uniform that you've been wearing. What what was that like, Lane? Uh, it felt like I was in a alternate reality. Right. You know, I never, you know, I made this uh, statement before. I never thought he'd be on our team, and and surprised that he is. But yeah, early impressions are, uh, good God, he has some big legs. I bet he can squat a lot. I bet he can run fast. And uh, you know, about 15 seconds in, you know, he's proven everybody right. A guy that can do it all at the running back position, and then you know, flex him out at wide receiver can do that. Very versatile, but. Uh, really just a truly a team guy you know he bonded with everybody uh, immediately you know we we played against him many years but really got to know him quickly very competitive loves the golf so uh, we did a lot of that too during OTAs but 
uh, just a great teammate, um, you know, or my early impressions. Okay. Um, so those legs fit in golf pants? Is that what you're saying? That actually happens? Uh, I, think he, I think he had to get them tailored. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, it, I think custom custom built. I mean, do, but I, just the general sense of of how good your offensive line is and how good he is and putting the two of you together at a mesh point with Jalen Hurts, with Devontae Smith and – A.J. Brown out wide and Dallas Goddard in the mix. It's it's tough to not just leap to conclusions here, Lane. I mean, what do you say? Yeah, I mean, on paper, you look at the talent, you look at the, the ability, the track record. Um, you know, I think we have the, the potential for a big year. But as you know, um, as games go on, we, we have to prove that. And, and we're eager to do that. You know, I felt, you know, last year the – last seven games was was a total misrepresentation of what we were and, and we didn't do anything to right that wrong so you know we're ready to do that eager to do that but yeah when I, when, when you when i look around you know i've been a, been a, a part of so many talented teams but um looking at our offense you know this is one of the best that i've been around so i, I what happened last year i mean we've had a conversation with you prior about it whatever did happen last year is that out of the building right now is that gone Lane? Uh, we'll see. I mean, um, you know, players play, coaches coach, and, you know, as, as bad as stuff was, um, we never got it corrected. So, um, you know, we did a lot of work the, this offseason. Uh, we have new office coordinator and Keller Moore. Excited about that. And, you know, with football, a lot of same plays, just different terminology, but really like, you know, what he's done in the past, um, you know, kind of offensive line friendly. And, yeah, man, we're, we're very excited. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're ready to get this bad taste out of our mouth and, uh, and get on the right track again. And how has Jalen Hurts shown up, Lane? And that question is infused with a lot of chatter coming out of the city there in in Philly about this being a big season for him, a little bit of pressure that – um, that that he may not be the guy after all because of the last seven games of last season, Lane. How do you respond to any of that chatter coming out of Philly? Yeah, I mean, as you know, Philly's a big big media market. You know, you hear lots of stories, but I think just this offseason, he's really done a good job of bonding with his teammates. Uh, I felt like the connection uh, has definitely grown. Uh, a really big offseason. Uh, the work ethic has is, is never been an issue. Uh, tremendous worker, but just becoming a more vocal leader. And, you know, I think whenever he speaks, you know, guys listen up and, and him reaching out to guys and, and creating these bonds in offseason. You know, he's having these, um, you know, throwing sessions with the receivers now in the offseason, um, you know, getting work in. But really has, has gone out of his way to connect with his teammates. And, and we feel that. And, yeah, we're really excited about this year. Every year is a kind of a prove-it deal to everybody uh, when you're in that town. And, um, you know, we, we all feel it to some degree. But um, Jalen's our guy moving forward. We love him. We respect him. And, uh, you know, nobody puts him more work than he does. Do you got an example of how he's become more vocal that you're willing to share? Uh, yeah, just when we do uh, breakout sessions uh, during the off season, you know, organizing uh, events to get together, usually more dinners. Um, hanging out stuff on the weekend. So maybe stuff we took for granted, um, you know, earlier uh, past few years, we really got a, you know, had a big chance this off season of bond and, and we spent time doing that bowling cookouts, but really just spending time together. Lane Johnson here on the Rich Eisen show from the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, everybody making a big deal of this tight end summit lane, you know, I mean, everybody's talking about these tight ends and you got yeah. your own summit, don't you Lane Johnson? Not to get all aggressive about it, but yeah. you've got your own uh, one. The Mastermind you know, Summit. You're a mastermind. Tight ends? That's one thing. <laughs> yeah, we, we thought that summit. name would, would, would get some intrigue. Uh, yes. Yeah, we're, we're hosting our seventh event. Uh, it started with around 25 guys, and we have around 350 attending this year. And, um, you know, sponsored by Metro Ford of OKC. We're having Mike Pereira come in and, and discuss rules, uh, mainly false starts and holdings, so we can really get a grasp on that. Um, Mark Dominic, uh, XGM, talk about, um, you know, things from a personnel uh, standpoint. And then uh, we have a lot of our Hall of Fame guys coming in, Alan Fanica, uh, Steve Hutchinson, um, Bruce Matthews. Um, Baldy's going to be down there, David nice. Dill. So, 
you know, we're just really excited to get all these guys in the room, discuss football, you know, getting getting that mind frame before camp starts. And really it's been, a, um, you know, the whole line is about brotherhood. Uh, I credit Von Miller to really starting the, the summit in the, in the first place with the D linemen. So, um, you know, the tight ends is taking off and, and the line, um, yeah, we're slowly growing. But it's it's been awesome, uh, lots of great communication and, and really a lot of great insight um, over the, the course of the two or three days that we're there. 350 linemen are showing up is what you're saying in Frisco, Texas, July 12th and 13th. Yeah, linemen, coaches. Okay. Uh, top college prospects, so you know we're discussing every position, uh, center guard, tackle, and you have some of the best that have ever done it, um, lending their advice and their knowledge. So uh, I think it's a tremendous, tremendous thing that I wish I had, you know, even when, when I was younger, guys. So I'm super excited about it. And and walk me through the choice of the word masterminds, Lane. Oh, offensive uh, line I, I mastermind partner, summit. What what, what is this? Yeah. What is this? I credit my uh, my partner Duke Mannyweather um, with developing the name. He's mm-hmm. the He's the man that reached out to me and was like, we should start something. Um, you know, he's been training guys for the past um, 10, 15 years. And uh, the mastermind came from, um, you know, getting the Hall of Fame guys that have played the position at the highest level, getting these guys in the room and having them discuss ball, how they approach games, how they approach training, how they approached, um, you know, just aspects of the life of, of being an NFL player. And so those are truly the masterminds. Uh, I felt like uh, the name would would be catchy and uh, create some intrigue, and and, and it has. I th- I agree. It caught my it caught my ear. Uh, before I let you go, Lane Johnson, um, let's talk about a couple of things that you've been up to uh, since last playing season. Did you sing a song with Zach Bryan at a concert in Oklahoma, Lane? Did you do that? Uh yeah, yeah, we did. Okay. Uh, revival. So the closing song. Um, you know, I, I first said that I was just fine with the meet and greet. Mm-hmm. And, uh, hey, I think you want a little bit more. So I ended up on, on the stage and uh, got the words right. Uh, got in a good <laughs> rhythm and, and it was a good time. Okay. Just want to make sure. Uh, how did you prep for this thing? I mean, so you know it? You just know this stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I knew the song, so there wasn't a whole lot of prep. But, okay. uh, yeah, kind of, you know, last 10 minutes of the concert, I got um, word of what was about to happen and, here we go. So not a whole lot of thinking uh, went into it, but okay. it was a fun time. And, uh, and yeah. So he's, is he an Eagle fan or is it, this is a sooner thing? Lane? Uh, no, he's a uh, true blue Eagles fan. Okay. So I didn't really get to talk to him. Um, I think he just grew up hating the Cowboys. You know, he's from, <laughs> um, Ulaga, Oklahoma, which is a little bit past Tulsa. So I think he had a disdain for uh, the Cowboys and, uh, his love for the Eagles grew, um, an early age, so uh, that's how he got into it. Listen, it's bonding through spite is something I can relate to, Lane. That's something I can absolutely relate to. Yeah. And then lastly, I mean, I, I've saved the best for last. WrestleMania, really? I mean, Lane, that's got to be. I mean, where where does this rank for you? You and Kelsey and Ray Mysterio in April. What, what happened? Yeah, it was uh, you know something that I always uh, grew up watching. You know, never thought I would actually be partaking in it, but. As the Jason Kelsey show uh, progresses, um, you know, he asked me if I wanted to do kind of uh, a week of training before uh, a monster factory uh, as the lead in the WrestleMania. So, yeah, we um, it, it was a great time. You know, we didn't really know a whole lot going in, uh, knew who we we're going to be working with uh, and got to meet Ray and Dominic. And, um, yeah, it was amazing. Uh, and my job was to not get hurt. And, um, you know, as I see it, uh, Kel says, Jim Carrey, and I'm Jeff Daniels, so uh, <laughs> I, I know my role. <laughs> Does that make you dumber? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, most most definitely. So, uh, Look at you, man. I mean, that's... Sh- yeah, shout out to Big Dom. Uh, so got a great shirt. Uh, you know, we came in there low-key when the lights were down and, and snuck up ringside. So uh, the first progression was to jump over. Uh, the bar and and they're not trip and fall. So once we got that, the you know the show was rolling. Wait a minute, what, Rich, what? Lane and Jason were sitting about four rows in front of me. I was, oh, is that right? I was behind them and I happened to look. Hey, Lane, what's up, TJ here? What's I, up? I looked over and I snapped a picture of you guys and I'm like, who are these guys in the Eagles lucha match? I was like, wait a minute, that's got to be Kelsey and Lane Johnson because I just seen you at a Super Bowl party about a month earlier. So I was yeah. like, all right, so yeah. And there's the picture. Look at I took. that. You guys hopped right in front of me. <laughs> It was amazing. People went nuts. It was great. They came in there with the Rey Mysterio and the LWO and clean house. 
Yeah, I think the, I think the coolest thing was like immediately going backstage and, and Triple H is there watching the production. You have guys kind of like in an assembly line getting ready to go out. And so, yeah, man, big, big production. Uh, and it was awesome just to be around the guys and, and see everybody. <laughs> Let's be honest. More butterflies that or the Super Bowl, Lane? Uh, that. Really? <laughs> that for sure. <laughs> At least I had some sort of rehearsal uh, with the playing part, but that was was totally new, but fun. Really? more Seriously, more butterflies than playing in an actual Seriously. Super Bowl? Seriously, yeah. I mean, by the end of the season, when you get to these games, the playoff game, the kind of, the you know, the butterflies for me, I feel like, are generally in, in the beginning of the season. And by the end, you're just so programmed and wired to practice and plan that it's, you know, more routine than anything. And the big Dom you mentioned, that's the big Dom we all know about. Is that what you're saying? He helped you get down there? Is that what you're saying? What happened? Uh, yeah. I mean, he had a kind of rough, uh, rough go during the season. Um, but I wanted to show appreciation just for uh, the man he is, uh, for myself, for the Eagles and, you know, helping everybody out, um, you know, throughout my tenure there. So, so shout out to big Dom. So you got, you got, you got him, you, you got him down there is what you're saying. Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, he, he was there. I think you can kind of get around yeah. uh, pretty free range. He's a free range kind of guy. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, he, he got it set up. Okay. Good enough. Uh, Lane, thanks for the time. <laughs> Have a great time at the Mastermind Summit. Um, keep us in mind, um, and let's let's chat soon. All righty. Appreciate you, Rich. Happy birthday, and uh, see you next time. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.